everyone and welcome back to another Disney by Alphabet video. Hallelujah, we're finally on to the second row of letters after... Uh, um... Oh... <laughs> Three years! Uh, whoopsie daisy! <laughs> Today we're on to the letter J and I originally juggled around with the idea of working with Jim Hawkins from Treasure Planet or Jafar from Aladdin but considering my last couple of entries included a god and a fairy, I figured it wouldn't hurt to tackle another animal instead. Thus, Judy Hopps from Zootopia bounced onto the list in their place. She just has that nice balance of personality and detail in her character design to the point where I have something to work with but I'm not completely overwhelmed by details. Like I don't know, a certain John Bloody Silver from Treasure Planet? <laughs> It was bad enough when I had to draw that cyborg arm for the birthday present I did for Jared a couple of years ago. Never again if I can avoid it. For my version of Judy, I was going to make the proportions a little more humanoid with my design doll model to fit better with my style. Looking back on my past Disney animal portraits, I have been fairly loyal to the original proportions and characteristics, aside from my Figaro piece where I went down the realism route. It's good to shake things up every once in a while. Sometimes you gotta make the conscious decision to draw what comes natural to you rather than fight yourself to recreate a perfect replica. That kind of struggle has made me stumble in the past. You lose time and energy in a piece until you're so demotivated you don't really want to finish it. You take a step back from it for a time and come back with fresh eyes on the problem or you end up leaving it to gather dust as you move on to the next piece. There's work in the word artwork for a reason, people. Despite what the odd draw for free or exposure person out there might think to the contrary. And if you're one of those people, or hell, even companies? Cause yes, it ain't just individual small fries that pull that crap. There's something I'd like to show you. Get the fuck out! Something that did make me pause on this piece was the pose I would put Judy in. The most popular pose you can find Judy in amongst official renders and artwork is with her arms crossed, and I for one love to draw characters with their arms crossed in one way or another. It has not been a conscious decision, I swear. I may have a problem. I wonder if it has something to do with my fascination with toned arms. Mm. Given all that and how Judy's more popular images have her arms crossed, I did wonder for a moment if I should try something different. But that sassy confidence, which is communicated so well via a pair of crossed arms and a puffed out chest, suit her character so well. I just couldn't think of any other alternative that I would like better. So just add another crossed arm portrait to my ever-growing collection. Right next to my backlit artwork collection. <laughs> I swear, if you can't quickly identify an artwork as mine, look for a crossed arms or a light source positioned behind the character and that'll easily give it away. And what do you know, today's portrait is gonna be both. Whoops. <laughs> now I gotta be honest with you guys, I really struggled with the commentary of this video. I swear I was getting distracted a lot more than usual. I'd write down a sentence or two because your girl cannot for the life of her do improv commentary and then promptly got distracted by social media, my Wolfden game, my phone, or would just slowly zone out. I think it, there's a tiny bit of ADD flaring up perhaps, I'm not sure, but a scatterbrain I most definitely am. I forget things or lose grasp of thoughts so easily sometimes. For example, I might realize I need something from another room, so I'll go to get it, only to be interrupted by someone, be it in person or via message on my phone, for just a moment. Only to totally forget what I was meant to be doing in the first place. I try to rewind events in my head to see what the initial trigger was, but if I can't put the pieces together right away, sometimes I have to wait for the original trigger to come about again, or wait for a random reminder that could hit me a few minutes, hours, or even days later. Yeah. Pain in the buttocks, really. I don't suppose many of you watching this video can relate. Anyway, back to the artwork at hand. An interesting tool I've come across thanks to a video by the YouTube artist Jazza is Artbreeder, a online tool that lets you create copyright free images using their library of work to blend and mash together pictures and styles to make something completely unique. 
It can make anything from portraits to landscapes and anything in between. Gathered, you do have to pay up if you want decent quality files of whatever you make, so don't expect to get something for nothing, but it's still a lot of fun to play around with. Rather than using a cityscape image from Zootopia, I wanted to place Judy in a more rustic outdoors setting. Not quite as dense as the rainforest region, but nothing as concrete jungle as the main city. So I needed to make an art breeder landscape to get the balance between nature and rural city I was wanting. <laughs> I swear, I'll learn to paint landscapes properly someday. Just not today. In the meantime, I really liked how this art breeder background turned out and it encouraged me to use a more toned down color palette and treatment when it came time to render Judy. I just love the hazy sunrise feel of the environment and think the rendering really helped her appear as part of the scenery. I try new methods and techniques every major artwork I do, so I'm always learning how best to achieve what I'm after. Something I do want to improve on in my future work is the subsurface scattering or the effect backlighting can have on a semi-transparent object like the membrane of ears or tips of fingers. Out of everything that went into this piece, that is the one area I would have liked to have turned out better. But overall, I think Judy Hopps' entry in my Disney alphabet turned out great. Now I'm curious, what do you believe is going to be the next character in the series? What characters that start with the letter K do you hope to see in my style? Let me know in the comments below! Thanks for watching everyone. If you liked this video, be sure to tap that like button, share it, or leave a comment below. If you have a couple coins to spare, please consider pledging to my Patreon, which directly funds my channel and art projects in exchange for a range of exclusive rewards. Every little bit helps, and anything is greatly appreciated. Until next time, see ya!